Hi everybody and welcome to the Eugene O'Neill National Historic Site. Thank you so much for joining us today. Behind me here, this fortress-like building is Dow House. This is where Eugene O'Neill lived for the last six years of his writing career. And when we go through the gate, we're gonna see some elements of the Spanish colonial style intermixed with their interpretation of certain Chinese design elements. So for example, this guardian gate behind me, this is an example of their understanding of feng shui. Their understanding is that the black color keeps out the negative energy. So we're gonna go through this gate and we'll talk a bit more about this house in there. This red door behind me, red is a lucky color in Chinese culture, so this continues the theme of welcoming only the positive, so that this can be a creative oasis for O'Neill. So let's go inside. Well, if you're quite ready, perhaps we will explain. I suppose that Annie told you I'd been to visit Hazel and Peter while you were away. Yes, I thought it peculiar. You never visit anyone overnight. Why did you suddenly take that notion? I didn't. You didn't visit them? No. Then where did you go? To New York. I've suspected something lately. The excuse you've made for all these trips there this past year, that grandfather was sick. I know he has been, and that you've stayed at his house. But I've suspected lately that wasn't the real reason, and now I can prove it isn't. Because I waited outside grandfather's house and followed you. I saw you meet Brent. Well, what if you did? I told you myself I ran into him by accident. You went to his room. He asked me to meet a friend of his, a lady. It was her house we went to. I asked the woman at the basement. He had hired the room under another name, but she recognized his description. And yours, too. She said you had come there often in the past year. It was the first time I had ever been there. He insisted on my going. He said he had to talk to me about you. He wanted my advice on how to approach your father. How can you lie like that? How can you be so vile as to try to use me to hide your adultery? Minnie! Your adultery, I said it! No! Stop lying, I tell you! I went upstairs and I heard you kissing him and telling him, I love you, Adam. You're vile! You're shameless and evil. Even if you are my mother, I say it. I knew you hated me, Vinny, but not as bitterly as that. Very well. I love Adam Brandt. What are you going to do? How can you say that without any shame? You don't give one thought to Father who's so good who trusts you? How could you? You would understand if you were the wife of a man you hated. Don't, don't say that. I won't listen. You will listen. I'm talking to you as a woman now, not as mother to daughter. That relationship has no meaning between us. You called me vile and shameless. Well, I want you to know 
That's exactly what I felt about myself for over 20 years, giving my body to a man I- Stop telling me such things! And you, you've always hated father. No. I loved him once, before I married him. As incredible as that seems now. He was handsome in his lieutenant's uniform. He was silent and mysterious and romantic. But marriage soon turned his romance into disgust. Well, I was born of your disgust. I've always guessed that, Mother. Ever since I was little. When I used to come to you with love, but you would always push me away. I felt it. Ever since I can remember your disgust. I tried to love you. I told myself it wasn't human not to love my own child born of my body. But I could never make myself feel you were born of any body but his. You were always my wedding night to me and my honeymoon. How can you be so... But you loved Oren. Why didn't you hate him too? Because by then, I had forced myself to become resigned in order to live. And most of the time I was carrying him, your father was away with the army in Mexico. I had forgotten him. And by the time Oren was born, he seemed my child. Only mine. And I loved him for that. I loved him until he let you and your father nag him into the war in spite of my begging him not to leave me alone. I know his leaving was your doing, Vinny. It was his duty as a man to go. He'd have been sorry the rest of his life if he hadn't. I love him better than you. I was thinking of him. Well. I hope you realize I never would have fallen in love with Adam if I'd had Oren with me. After he had gone, I had nothing left but hatred and a desire to be revenged and a longing for love. And it was then I met Adam. I saw he loved me. He doesn't love you. You're only his revenge on father. Do you know who he really is? He's the son of that low nurse girl, grandfather, put out of our house. So, you found that out? Were you hoping it would be some kind of crushing surprise to me? I've known about it all along. He told me when he said he loved me. I suppose knowing who he was gave you all the more satisfaction to add that disgrace. Will you kindly come to the point and tell me what you intend doing? I suppose you'll hardly let your father get in the door before you tell him. No. Not unless you force me to. Oh, I don't wonder you're surprised. Father would disown you publicly no matter how much the scandal cost him. I'm aware of that. I know him even better than you do. It's my first duty, to protect him from you. I know better than to expect any generosity on my account. I won't tell him, provided you give up Brant and never see him again. And promise to be a dutiful wife to father and make up for all the wrong you've done him. <laughs> what a fraud you are, with your talk of your father and your duty. Oh, I've no doubt you want to spare his pride. 
And I know how anxious you are to keep the family from even more scandal. But all the same, that's not your real reason for sparing me. It is. You wanted Adam Brandt yourself. No. And now you know you can't have him. You're determined that at least you'll take him from me. No. But if you told your father, I'd have to go away with him. He'd be mine still. You can't bear that thought, can you? I know you, Vinny. I've watched you ever since you were a child, trying to do exactly what you're doing now. You've tried to become the wife of your father and the mother of Orin. You've always schemed to steal my place. No, it's you who has always stolen all the love from me ever since I can remember. But I don't want to talk about any more lies and excuses. I want to know right now if you're going to do what I told you to do or not. What if I refuse? What if I go off openly with Adam? Then father would use all his influence and get Brent blacklisted so he'd lose his command and never get another. And father would never divorce you. You could never marry. You'd become an anchor around his neck. Don't forget, you're five years older than he is. He'll still be in his prime when you're an old woman and all your looks are gone. He'll grow to hate the sight of you. You devil! You mean little... I wouldn't call names if I were you. I'm a fool to let you make me lose my temper over your jealous spite. Very well. I'll do as you asked. I promise I'll never see Adam again after he calls this evening. Hello. 